This is going to be a little bit of a strange video because I don't have a tripod. It busted. So I'm going to have to hand hold my camera here while I do this. My name is John. I have a K40 Mini, actually. And for some of us, this X-Rail arrives out of alignment with the front of the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take kind of a trip through the entire X and Y rail system on the K40. So bear with me here. Basically, the K40 is designed with two movements of travel. You have your X, which is travel from left to right and back, and the gantry or the rail that it travels on. Then you have your Y travel, which is travel from front to back. Now, it does not travel on an arm as such. It travels on a precision-guided rod on this side with bearings. And on the other side, it rides on a set of wheels, which rides on the top of this frame right here, which is part of the welded frame that holds everything together. So let's see what it takes to get kind of down and dirty on this and an introduction into the K40 X and Y system. In the front of this unit, what you're going to find is a plate right here. It'll have two screws, on one on each side. When you remove those screws, you will expose the motor drive for the Y axis. You'll have a screw on each side, so bear with me here a minute. This is not the kind of video that I would like to have made, but I'm getting ready to close my system up entirely. So it's either tear this out and show you what's what today, or forget it. Underneath of here, what you have is a motor. This motor is a double-ended which means that the shaft comes out of both sides of the motor. On one end, it drives the pulley, which drives a belt underneath of here, which is what drives the right end of the Y rail, or the X rail, rather. This shaft here goes across, through, and drives the pulley and uh, belt on the left side, which again is what drives the X rail. Up here you've got mirror number two. Your main mirror is on the back side where your where your tube is. On these particular models, what you also have is your cluster up here, which not only is your mirror, but it's your homing sense switches. Mine has mechanical switches. Some have the new uh, optical switches. I don't know if they're true optical or if they're a Hall effect, but it either way, the new ones are electronic. But it also has a motor right here. And this motor is what drives your X head. In other words, your laser head. You got the motor over here with your pulley. Your belt goes inside. And over on this end, you've got another uh, pulley. And that is your belt system for the X axis. Now, those of you that have got a X rail that is out of skew, in other words, it is not square, this is what you're going to be adjusting. Do not mess with these screws in this plate on the end of the rail, nor do you mess with these screws on the other end. The only time that you would want to mess with this plate or the other plate is if eyeballing it, this rail is obviously cut at an angle. Since they're machine cut, they should be pretty square. This is not where you will make the adjustment for the X rail if it is out of alignment. So let me get down in here a little bit more. What you're going to find is underneath of here, remember this is, this is the Y drive here, okay? What you're going to find is you're going to find two 
minimal bolts in the front and probably two minimal, maybe three bolts in the very back here. And they're kind of hidden. In this case, I've already put this back in and I've only got one. If you look carefully at the holes when you get yours out, you're going to find that they did some really, really wonderful machine work lining up these holes. Now, these bolts are a number 10 metric. Everything in here is metric. So you're going to find that everything underneath up here it is a metric. So let me get this out and then we'll take another look at it. Okay, I've got my bolts out and I'm ready to remove the entire frame to which all the motors and both rail systems are mounted. Before you can do that, chase down all the wires that come from your system. In this particular case, I've got wires that come from the home. I've got wires that come from the home and wires that come from the motor. Those come down on my side, go through the divider and into the main circuit board, which I have pulled loose just so I can get at it. Now, when you're pulling your wires off that circuit board, make sure that you mark the ends of the plugs with some type of an identifier that means something to you so that when it comes time to plug these things back in, you know which cable goes where. Do not disconnect any cable until you have marked it either with a number, a tag on a piece of tape attached to the wires, uh, some sort of a color code with uh, different colored paint dobs, whatever in the world you want. Make sure that you do it. Do not mess with those wires without marking them. Once you've got that done and your frame is loose, now in this case I also have a set of wires here that go to a LED spotter here. This should lift out, lift the left or the right side rather, very carefully, push everything to the rear, Kind of hard to do this one-handed here, but lift and tilt, and it should come out. Just a moment. Okay, let's see what we can do here. In this particular case, what I have done is I've gone into my garage where I have my table saw, and I am using the steel top of my table saw as a level, hard surface. You want to make sure that you get this frame onto a solid level or surface so that everything can be tested for level because these frames are not necessarily known for their most accuracy they may be square because they're welded and they may have done a good job on the square but it doesn't mean that they are level from one corner to the other in fact when i originally pulled this out it was not level on one corner what I ended up doing was putting a block of wood under this corner and under the front right corner and then leaned on the frame until I got it to the point where it is level. Okay, now let's take a look at what we've got here. From the side, you can see now that what we have is a steel frame that is welded. To that frame is mounted the Y motor, which is over here. The shaft comes through right here. It goes into a belt, and that belt feels a little loose. But it, the, the Y slides on this particular steel bar. This is the home switch right here. And back here... Uh, you can see how loose it is already, and I didn't even touch it. Good thing I pulled this back out. That is the tensioner for the left side Y drive belt. Okay. Then you have the motor that drives your left axes. 
you got your pulley, your belt. The belt goes inside the X rail. On top of here, you've got four screws. Now I've replaced mine. You may very well find that what you have are Phillips head screws in here. I replaced mine with these cap screws, so that hex head cap screws, so that I can get more torque to tighten this down. This is where you're going to make your adjustment for the out of square X rail. These screws here obviously hold, and I don't have it tight because I haven't lined up my mirrors. These are the, the screws that you're going to loosen and so that you can move this plate, do whatever you need to do in order to align your number two mirror. Now we can get a good look at the Y motor. You can see that it's a double-ended motor, a double-ended shaft. This is the pulley and belt system that drives the X rail. It goes across here through the bushing and into the pulley on the left side, which is where the belt is for the same X axis. This is the underside of your uh, head plate. One of the things that you want to do is make sure that you check the torque or the check the, the tightness of the screws on this coupling. In fact, before I put this all back together, I'm going to pull these out, put a dab of blue, blue, not red, but blue thread locker in there, which makes it a semi-permanent attachment. Bread is... You'll destroy the screw, the grub screw, before you get it out. But blue simply is a thread locker and will lock these screws into place so that they don't loosen over time. Then on the right side of the rail, you have pretty much a duplication of what you had on the left side. Up front here is your drive pulley coming off of the Y motor. The Y motor is what drives the X rail front and back. Back here is your pulley, and here is the tensioner for the Y pulley right side. Now, this is extremely difficult to get at when it is in the case. So, just be aware that if you... I think my phone is playing games with me a little bit. Here, we'll try this again. This is the tensioner, the belt tensioner on the right side at the very, very, very rear of this welded frame. Once it's in the cabinet, this is going to be extremely difficult to get at. It is another 10 millimeter uh, metric, but this is also a screw. It is not a bolt as such. On this side, remember I said, do not mess with the plates on the end of the X rail. These plates are attached, a couple of screws. These guys hold the tensioner down in here. Okay, underneath, come on, underneath there, you can see that what you've got is a belt, or I'm sorry, is a wheel. Now what's interesting is that that wheel simply rides on this surface of the welded frame. It is a plastic wheel. Uh, I saw one of the guys a video just the other yesterday, as a matter of fact, where he had a wheel that was out of round, and so this was going ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk as it was running. And it gives you a very uneven cut or engrave. The bottom wheel is simply there just to keep things from lifting off. But it does, in fact, have slop in it because it only rides on this surface. Now, I have a drag chain installed on here. It came this way from the dealer. What you want to do in order to align the X rail is to back the tension on the on the uh, belt tensioner loosen this bolt so that the belt underneath here 
is very loose because it's going to have to jump a tooth, maybe two, maybe three teeth on this pulley as you align that X rail. Then come over here and back off the screws in this these two locations. Now remember, I said I'd replaced mine with bolts so that I can put some torque on those suckers. I don't trust the tension of the uh, screws. Once you have that loose, you can pull this forward. You can then take a pair of mic uh, micrometer or a uh, tape measure or whatever in the world you want to use to measure this. But then as you pull here on the right side, you will notice that it will shift on the motor. You are not moving the motor, but you are changing the location, the alignment of this plate to the motor. And that is what you want to do. You want to use those loosened screws, move the X rail, squeeze it, move it, squeeze it, physically squeeze it. Make sure that this belt then lines up again, okay? Once you have your distance here set, so that it is parallel, tighten these screws down. Check, tighten, check, tighten, check, tighten until you are absolutely positive that what you have is a square X rail to the frame. That's the only reference that we really have is that. Because everything else, you'll notice that there's no adjustment on the Y rod, none. It goes into holes that are punched in the frame, and that is it. There's no adjustment. So the only thing that you can do is to align your X and hope that the guys in the factory got the Y set correctly because there's no adjustment in here at all. Once you have that X rail set to where you want it to go, then you can come back over on the right side Make sure that your belt is seated into the, the pulley properly. Come back here, set your tension. Now, how much tension there should be on here, I don't know. I've never seen anything that really has a write-up, but I wasn't thinking that you want to be able to depress that belt about half the distance, just a normal finger press, about half the distance of this space here, which is the thickness of your pulley. In other words, you want to just be able to depress it about halfway. You don't want it too tight, because then you're putting undue tension on the whole system. But you also don't want it loose, because then it'll go sliding around on you, possibly. Once you have the tension there, come back over here. Check your left side Y belt. And you want to make sure that you have about the same tension. And I'm going to have to set mine before I put this back into my case. Once you've got these two bolts tight, once you've got your belt tensioned over here, you should be ready to go as far as your X rail. Again, there's no adjustment on the Y rail. I apologize for this video. My, cam my uh, camera and tripod, are, <laughs> tripod broke and... So I'm using my cell phone, so I apologize. Do not worry about slack in here at this time. You're going to be setting all of this as you align your mirrors, okay? As for the X head, the only adjustment, really the adjustment that you have on the X head is that these bolts are elliptical and as you turn those bolts you can tighten that that pulley I'm sorry that uh, this wheel will tighten or loosen you've got two in the front you've got two in the back you want a minimal about of slack as far as wobble of the head okay now I'm twisting it pretty hard a minimal amount of slack but you do not want it tight to the point where it is impeded from a free wheel okay just take a gentle hold gently slide from side to side if you feel that it's grabbing at any point find out why same thing with your y rail slide at front 
slide it rear and feel with your fingertips. If you feel at any point that it is not moving freely, find out why. Now the only other thing I did, and I don't know if it makes any difference, this is a rather rough paint finish from the factory, as you can see on here. I simply took some sandpaper and sanded that uh, rough finish down to where it is smooth. What the heck, I had it out. The wheel rides a little bit smoother. I don't know if it's going to make a dadgum bit of difference or not. So at any rate, remember what you've got. Your home switches are over here on the left side. You've got your Y, I'm sorry, your X axis motor, and you have your number two mirror. You have your X rail, the head rolls on the X rail, and it rolled that X uh, rail rolls on one wheel, one, not a set, one wheel underneath of here. I wish that they made those wheels in rubber, but they are plastic. In the front, you've got your Y motor. It is a double-ended, meaning that it's driving both the right and via this shaft, it is driving the left. There's a belt under each side, which means that there's a grand total of three belts on this, and they are not a normal belt. So be careful. If you, if you need to replace a belt, be careful. They are not a normal belt. Spec the pulleys that drive them are not a normal belt spec. Like you see guys using, for instance, for their motorized uh, X platform or Z platforms and etc. These belts are not standard. Your tensioners for the belt are on the back for your Y. They are a number 10. And the tensioner for your X is in here and it is screws and basically you're not going to be messing with it a whole bunch. Now going by the, the amount of slack in here, all I can say is we're going to go with that and hope that everything works. If you have any questions, drop me a line. I hope that this has helped somebody visualize what their uh, system looks like inside because this is where all of the work is going to get done. And the better understanding you have of the way that it interacts with each other part and where to go if you have a problem, the clearer it will be for you to work the problem out. Thanks for watching. Bye. As I was putting my uh, rail system back in my own cabinet, I realized that I had left off one part of this video that really is very, very important. As you put this back into your machine, you need to make sure that the Y drive, okay, and it's, the only thing you can do is trust that this edge of the steel frame is parallel to the Y, okay? When you put it in, you want to make sure that your distance from that wall to this edge is square front and rear. Now I had a real problem getting mine straight the first time I put it in. It took me a while and I ended up having to use vice grips to hold this back section while I got one bolt in that was capable of holding it. Remember these holes that have been drilled and punched and etc. by the factory are the best that they are is suggestions that maybe you can put a bolt here, but do not count on it. I had difficulty. I only managed to find two holes that actually lined up where I wanted it. The reason that this is so important is that if this is not tracking square to, to lens or uh, mirror number one, you got a real serious problem. That beam coming off of the laser, off a of lens one, is going to track straight. However that mirror is pointed and aimed on one, it's going to track straight. It does not deviate. If this rail is straight with that beam, 
then this mirror, when lined up, will be lined up no matter if it is in the front or if it's in the rear. But if the Y is canted left or right in relation to that laser beam, you can line it up here. You can go, ha, 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 I got it. You pull it down here and you're going to have to say, ah, I don't got it. Because as you slide the Y back and forth, this mirror, if this is not straight, is going to be tracking sideways. It's going to be moving one way or the other as it tracks. So make sure, make sure, sure, sure that the edge of this steel rail, which is really your only decent reference point, is square to the left wall of the case. Wherever in the world you decide works the best in relation to getting these bolts back in, that's where it's going to sit. And from that point, then you can adjust this number two plate to compensate if the beam is off to the left a little bit or if the beam is off to the right a little bit coming from lens number one you want that to track dead on square however it comes whether it comes here or it comes here you want that beam coming off a of lens one to track absolutely perfectly square coming across the cabinet that means that you want your X or your Y to track absolutely parallel to that beam. If you don't, as I said, you can align this for you can align this for the next five years. It'll match up on the back. It won't match in the front. It'll match in the front, but damn it, it doesn't match in the back. And that is why is because your X or your Y rail rather is not parallel running square with your laser beam. The same thing is going to end up being true when you get to aligning your X. If this is not tracking, which is what happens when the X rail is canted, okay, if it is not tracking dead square all the way across, what you're going to have is a beam that's lined up here, looks good, Get it over here, and it isn't so good. So remember, take your time. You've gone to the effort to make sure that your X-rail is aligned to the edge of your frame. Now take the time to make damn straight that your Y is aligned to the case. That is the only adjustments that you have, the only chances that you have to make sure that everything is lined up. Those two adjustments. Thank you for watching. Again, sorry for the quality. Hope you got some good information out of this. Take care.